how do we solve this? Okay. So the solution is we have to prevent task swapping during the locking of a semaphore. Okay. So one of the things we can do, well, that's one solution, right? Is let's just not let any task swapping happen. Um, again, that would give priority to a lower priority task, right? Because in the case of this, if we just prevented task three from blocking, in other words, as long as it has the, the shared resource locked, turn off all task swapping, okay? That would solve the problem for when, when task one needs to use that resource, but what if there's a task zero, which is even higher priority, and it doesn't use the shared resource at all? Again, it would simply, it would be starved during the locking of the shared resource. And then this lower priority task, again, would be um, preventing the higher priority task from executing. We can't have that. Um, and so a better solution is to actually bump up the priority of the task that is, is, has locked the semaphore, okay? What does that mean? That means if task, we need to bump up the priority of task two because task one wants that shared resource, but we, it, during the lock period, if we bump up the priority to another task which uses that same resource, during the period the resource is locked, okay, that is the key here. So we're only going to, so task two is only going to inherit the uh, uh, priority while um, it is locked, okay? So here is again the case. Priority inheritance, T1 blocks on a locked semaphore, okay? Now, if T1 is blocked on T2's lock, then T2 inherits T1's priority, okay? So, because, and remember, the operating system knows this. The operating system can keep track of who set the lock, who is currently using the resource because of the uh, signal and weight functions. And so, if T2 um, if T2 is blocked on, uh, T1 is blocked on T2's lock, then T2 inherits the priority of T1. When T2 then unlocks, then we're going to give T2 revert its priority. Okay, so again, in this case, E task 3 is block, is locking the semaphore. And then task one, the higher priority task, comes to this point and says, wait a minute, I'm blocked on task one's lock, on task three's lock. So task three would then say, oh, I'm going to take the priority of task one. Again, task one has the highest priority in this set. And so task two will not be able to interrupt task three, because task three will, at this point, will temporarily have a higher priority, and so it will finish using the sh shared resource. Then, when it unlocks, it will revert to a lower priority, um, and in fact, this case, third priority, but now task one will have unblocked, and therefore task two, when um, when task three finishes with use of the shared resource, the locked resource, task one will unblock and it will have priority over task two. And so that's how it prevents the priority inversion. Now, it's important that priority inheritance is transitive. So if task three blocks Two, which blocks task one, then task three is going to inherit the priority of task one 
through task two, right? Um, so has to be transitive because that prevents this problem. Again, you can still get priority inversion if it's not transitive. Then, of course, we have the standard rule that any um, task X can preempt task Y, task TY, if TX is not blocked and the current priority of TX is greater than the current priority of TY. So again, it's a temporary elevation of priorities, and that's how priority inheritance works, and the priority inheritance protocol specifically. And so this is the example, exact same situation, um, that um, when T3, uh, when T1 um, preempts T3, and then goes to block on the semaphore, then immediately T3 inherits T1's priority, T1 goes to, T1 goes to sleep, and it's off the ready queue. T3 can continue on, um, and then T2 tries to release, okay, but um, T3 has a higher priority because it has inherited T1's priority, and so T2 never interrupts T3, and then when it finishes using the shared resource, um, T3 unlocks the shared resource, its uh, uh, priority reverts, and task 1 can um, preempt task 3, um, and then it runs to completion because it's higher priority than task 2. Now, once T1 gets done, there are two tasks that are ready, and that is task T3 needs to complete and task T2 is ready to launch. But, um, again, T3 is the lowest priority, so T2, at being higher priority, um, will have the net will be executed and it runs to completion, and then finally task 3 completes.